This is his favorite thing. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to another episode of Uncloaked. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to all my subscribers for letting me have the week off last week. I felt that it was important because of the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that was going on in the world to create more space for the voices of the black community and I didn't want to crowd that with my content. Um, I will link down below some organizations and places that you can donate to to support the Black Lives Matter movement and to support protesters who have been arrested and to support the officials that are running for office in states where it's very important that they win instead of the people that are currently in their seats. So if you want to know ways that you can help out with all that, check the Dropbox down below and I'll have lots of links for it. I would also like to say that even though I am back and I'm going to be uploading weekly again, that doesn't mean that the Black Lives Matter fight is over. We can't forget that this is an ongoing problem. This will take a long, long time to fix. We can't just drop this issue because it's not trendy or hip anymore. We have to keep fighting, especially if you are a white ally to the Black Lives Matter movement. Your voice is so important. Speak to the white people around you. Try to educate them as much as you can and continue to be engaged in politics. Make sure that you're registered to vote and that if you if you can't get to the polls to vote, that you're prepared to vote by mail or do an absentee ballot. Just make sure that you are voting. This whole democracy thing doesn't work unless we all participate. So don't forget that this fight is ongoing and know that your voice does have an impact. With all that being said, uh, this week we are going to talk about finding deities to work with and figuring out which deities are calling to you and have a connection with you. This topic has been requested quite a few times and I've also gotten a lot of questions about it on my Tumblr blog. Uh, so I figured I would make a video about it since it is a confusing topic and I think when you're just getting started with spirituality or with Wicca, uh, it can be hard to discern what deities you should work with. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's get right into it. And this cat is gonna sit on me the whole time. <laughs> First, let's talk about why you should have specific deities to work with. And I guess the answer is you don't have to. Uh, it's all up to you and what feels right for your spiritual practice. If you are Wiccan, then you might, instead of working with a specific deity, work with just the general energy of God and goddess, uh, which is totally fine, really great. There's nothing wrong with that. But you might maybe as your spiritual practice evolves or as you reach different stages of your life, you might find that you are starting to want to work with specific deities. Um, or maybe you're just working with specific types of magic and there are certain deities that are really connected to that type of magic and having a relationship with that deity would really enhance that, that practice. So it can be beneficial to work with specific deities, but it is not essential. It's not necessary. Um, it's completely up to you. Even though it's not necessary, there are a lot of benefits to working with specific deities. One of the benefits is that your spiritual practice will be enhanced um, whenever you're doing magical workings. Yes, whenever you're doing magical workings um, and you're calling on that deity to be present and to aid you in that magical working, then it'll enhance it that much more and you're not drawing from your own personal power, you're drawing from the power of that god or goddess. So that is very helpful. So you can accomplish more uh, easier and also... You're the neediest boy I've ever met. I've met a lot of needy boys, let's just say that. Off track. Okay. And the other thing is working with deities, you know, working with deities is very beneficial, um, just mentally and, um, emotionally. It can feel really, really nice to know that you have specific deities in your corner looking out for you and working with you and helping you. You can't really replace that feeling. It's just really, really nice to feel energetically, spiritually supported. So that is one of the other really big bonuses to working with specific deities. And for me, with my spiritual practice, basically what I did is when I discovered Wicca as a teenager, I 
just studied it for a while and then once I started practicing, I didn't have any specific deities that I worked with. Mainly because I was a little baby Wiccan and I didn't know really any specific deities or anything about them. If you're just starting out on your Wicca journey, don't feel like you have to rush to find a deity to work with. It took... how long have I been Wiccan? It took six years for a relationship with a specific god to form. Um, but on the other hand, it took me only a year to form a relationship with a specific goddess. Um, so when you're just starting out, don't worry too much about immediately picking deities. They'll find their way to you as you practice spiritually more. Because as you practice more, uh, your kind of energetic light will get brighter and so gods and goddesses will start to realize that and they may introduce themselves to you without you even having to search for them. Um, that's not always the case. You can just choose a deity and start working with them because usually if you feel called to that deity, they are calling to you. Um, but sometimes the deity will make it very obvious that they're introducing themselves to you. This can be through dreams. Uh, they might come to you in a dream and introduce themselves or you might have some kind of symbolic view of them in a dream where they appear not as themselves but as something else. Another way is through repeat imagery, like you're watching a show and there's doves, you're on your computer and there's a dove, you're talking to a friend and they're telling you about a dove, like why is everyone talking about doves? And then you can look up which deities are associated with doves or whatever it is that you're getting repeat imagery of and then discover what deity it is that's really trying to get your attention. And then the last way that a deity would try to get your attention is through a dramatic introduction. I'll tell you some things that have happened to me. The first goddess that ever introduced herself to me was Bastet or Bast. Um, she is an Egyptian goddess. She's a cat goddess, a protection goddess. I've always had a very strong connection with cats and I grew up with cats and every familiar I've ever had has been a cat. Um, so Bast kind of introduced herself to me by uh, I run in my neighborhood and every time that I would go on a run, I would run into two or three cats <laughs> and they would follow me. So that can be a way that a god or goddess introduce themselves to you through an animal or many animals. Lilith introduced herself to me uh, through an owl, a uh, western screeching owl. I was in my backyard at around dusk and I walked over to the edge of my yard near the fence to pick something up and I heard a scream <laughs> and I looked up and right in front of me, like a foot from my face on the top of the fence was a western screeching owl staring right at me. Um, and then I slowly backed away. <laughs> but um. That was Lilith introducing herself to me. And so deities will introduce themselves to you either through animals or you might get introduced to a deity during a spiritual working. Deities can also introduce themselves to you simply by uh, helping you to discover that they exist. Another way to discover what deities are calling to you is to figure out what animals you feel a connection to. So for me, I feel a connection to cats led to me working with Bast and working with Sekhmet. So think about the animals that relate to you and that you feel a connection with, and then look up what deities are associated with that animal and see if any of those deities really resonate. And then along the same lines as that, do you have any familiars? My cats are my familiar. So just look at the animals that look to support your magical practice and your spiritual practice, and then research what those animals are connected to in terms of deities. Another way to discover which deities are calling to you are by just looking at the events that have transpired in your life and the hardships that you've gone through and then research what deities work with those issues and hardships. For example, if you've had a lot of illness in your life, you can research what deities really work with healing and with helping people battle illness. Maybe you've struggled a lot with self-love. Uh, you can start working with Aphrodite or other deities who are all about self-love and self-empowerment. So just look at the things that have happened to you and the things that you've experienced and see which deities really guide people through those hardships and those issues. 
Another thing that you can do is you can look at your spiritual practice and your magical workings and based on which areas of spirituality and magic you feel most drawn to and work the most with, you can figure out which deities to work with from that. So if you work a lot with plants and herbs, then you can find deities associated with growing plants and growing herbs and the harvest. If you work a lot with healing, you can find deities associated with healing. Just take the things that you already know about yourself within your spiritual workings and then research those things and figure out which gods and goddesses come up. Another way to discover which deities to work with is to open your Akashic records and ask any deities that are present for you to come forward and make themselves known. This one's a little bit more complicated because you do have to know how to open the Akashic records. I have a video about the basics of the Akashic records that I'll link above if you guys want to watch that. And you can read Linda Howe's book, How to Read the Akashic Records, to figure out how to open your own Akashic Records. I think this is a great way if you're feeling really stuck and you've tried all these other things and you just feel like you're not finding the deities that you want to work with or you feel like you can't get an answer from any deities, Opening your records can be really helpful because you will get an answer no matter what. It's kind of like they'll take the reins and they'll come forward and show themselves. So instead of you trying to research and discern what's going on and who's trying to call you, you can just literally ask in the Akashic records and then they'll come forward and you'll have a concrete answer. Another thing is Similar to working with deities, there are other types of entities that you can work with. You don't necessarily have to work with a god and a goddess. You can always just work with goddess energy, god energy, and then have entities that you work with. For example, angels or guardian spirits or guides, they don't necessarily fall into a hard god or goddess category. They're kind of somewhere in the middle. One way that you can discern whether or not angels or guardians are really, really present for you is if you're seeing a lot of repeat numbers. Like for me, almost every time I look at a clock, it's 333, 444, 222, 1111, you know, it's, it's things like that. Or maybe you're checking out at the grocery store and the price is the same number four times. So just little things like that to look out for that might be a sign that angels want to work with you or that guardian spirits want to work with you. And if you're struggling to discover a deity that you want to work with after trying all those things, another way is to just use divination to discover which deities want to work with you. You can do it with any divination method, really. You could ask outright, does blank want to work with me? If there's a specific deity that you're questioning, maybe might be calling to you. There is an oracle deck called the goddess deck, um, and it's all different kinds of goddesses. And so that could be a great method to discover which goddesses want to work with you. You could ask your deck what goddess is calling to me most right now, and then pick a card and see which goddess you get and then begin to form a relationship with them. And then once you feel like you've discovered a deity or a couple deities that you want to start forming a relationship with that you feel a connection with already, you want to do as much research and learning about that deity as possible. You really want to know what you're getting into before you start calling on any kind of entity or deity or spirit or anything. You don't want to walk into anything blind. You want to know who it is that you're talking to and dealing with. Working with deities and entities involves a level of respect and honor. So you wanna be respectful. So don't ever just on a whim work with a deity. It's not something you just kind of do. It's something that involves a lot of preparing and you have to take it seriously. What I like to do usually when I begin to work with a deity or an entity, if they've introduced themselves to me, then I will in return introduce myself back um, I'll usually do a ritual where I call on them and I introduce myself to them. Essentially, I would give them my loyalty and I would tell them that I am here now for them. I am following them and I hear them. And then moving forward, I would, in any spell work relating to them, I would involve them in it. So, you know, you have to keep up with your relationship with these deities. They aren't just gonna stay there endlessly for you if you do nothing for them. Uh, if you forget about them, they will move on. They're not going to forget about you, but they aren't going to be there as strongly for you if you're not strongly there for them. So it's important to continue to cultivate the relationship. Just like with your human friendships, you can't just not talk to someone for six months and then pop back in and ask for a favor. That's not cool. Um, so if you 
want to work with the deity, take it seriously and be respectful. Don't make any promises to deities that you can't keep. And you don't have anything to be afraid of, but it is, you know, they, they're, they're powerful and they mean it and they have ways of getting messages to you. So if they're mad at you, you will know. And ways to honor your deities is through one, like we talked about, working with them consistently, involving them in your spiritual workings and your magic. And then after doing a magical working or a spiritual working or a ritual or a spell with that deity, you want to honor them and thank them afterward. So you want to either give them an offering, whether that's some food that you have left over or a candle burning for a few hours or just a prayer of thanks. Everything is an exchange of energy. So those are some things that you can do to thank them. Burn a candle, give them some food, give them uh, whatever it is that they would want. And again, through researching your deity, you can find out what types of offerings they like. And if you aren't sure through research, you can always ask them what they would like you to do for them. So that is all about discovering what deities to work with and figuring out which deities are calling to you. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please like it and subscribe. I upload every single week. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer questions. And again, if you have any recommendations, I take those as well. This video was a requested video. so leave any requests down below in the comments also. All the links to support the Black Lives Matter movement are down in the Dropbox, so click those if you want to donate or find out other ways that you can support. I'm also going to link some petitions down below, so even if you don't have any money to donate, sign a petition, make your voice heard. And everyone remember, we are still dealing with a pandemic, so stay home when you can, be safe, make smart choices, take care of yourself and your loved ones by staying home as much as you can. Thank you all so much and I will see you next week. Bye.